All right, for today's project, we're gonna build a quick little battery box. And one of the things we're gonna do is show you MIG versus flux core. Now we've done that in a few other videos where we've primarily focused on sheet metal. We've shown you how it's kind of dirty, burns really hot, not really the best thing to use when you're doing that sheet metal project. But for something like this, you can get by. We're gonna show you how MIG wire's gonna look. We're gonna show you how flux core wire's gonna look. We're gonna weld up some coupons, get this battery box done. Should be a fun day. All right, so we got a Group 65 battery here. It's gonna be like what you'd see in a full-size truck. It's gonna wanna be around 11 and a quarter, seven and a quarter. We're gonna have it so that the battery actually sits on the angle iron here. So we have to account for our material thickness whenever we take our measurements, or just make sure we go up the inside of the box, not outside. All right, so we're gonna make two cuts here at 11 and a half. We're at 11 and a quarter side to side. That's gonna give it just a little bit of room to drop it in. And it's also gonna account for this material thickness as we make our miters. So this is our benchtop bandsaw. It's really portable, it's easy to use. And the way it works, this vise stays stationary, the whole head swivels. You get a pretty darn good result with this thing. Okay, so we're hoping to miter cut all the corners. In order to do that with this saw, because it only miters one direction, you kind of have to do some tricky things. We got a piece of square tube in there. That allows us to clamp that angle upside down, which then allows us to make an inside corner. You know, so we'll cut this off. We'll then get our 11 and a half length, flip it, cut again, and that'll give us a nice miter. Do that four more times, we'll end up with a nice tray. It's pretty consistent there. So we got everything cut, got our whole base here. It's 11 and a half by seven and a half, like we were hoping for. That with the material thickness factored in, gets us to the size of this battery. It should drop right in and be nice and tight. We're gonna use this welding vise, make sure everything's square, and then we're gonna get this welded up. This is a Milwaukee right angle die grinder, little two amp hour battery. Really nice tool, really easy to use. You can put a roll lock set up with a quarter inch shank. Pretty sure they also give you an eighth inch mandrel in here as well. All right, so we got the MiG-90 here. We got it already set up with solid wire and gas. We're gonna run it that way for the first two corners. Then we'll flip it over to flux core. And we'll show you guys a good side-by-side -side where flux core, it's gonna do pretty well in this application. Solid core, it's gonna do just a little bit better, a little bit cleaner, but they both work for something like this. Well, we got the two sides welded up with the MIG solid wire. Worked out great. Everything's pretty square. I'm real happy with how that's turning out. We're gonna weld up some coupons, some eighth inch steel with the solid wire. That's gonna give us a good side by side when we swap over to flux. You guys are really gonna be able to see a difference, but it's not gonna be as drastic as it was when we welded sheet metal. There you go. You can see how clean that weld is, how consistent it is. Really easy to travel, really easy to see what you're doing. That's one of the benefits of solid wire. Switching over from MIG to flux is pretty straightforward. We do have to flip our drive roller, so we're using the knurled side. We do have to switch our polarity. It's toolless, it's really easy to do. We're all swapped over to flux core wire. We had to tweak our settings a little bit. We're running a little bit more wire speed, a little less heat. We're running the more wire because the flux core wire actually has flux inside the wire at the core. That's why it's called flux core. And uh, that means that you end up with less filler metal. So we'll weld this battery box up the rest of the way, weld a coupon, you guys will be able to see side by side the difference. All right, so what you can see on one side we got MIG, the other we got flux. It's a little dirtier, burns really hot. I mean, you definitely get good penetration. Flux is great for material like this. It's also great outside, or if you're in the wind, can't afford a gas bottle, you need some portability. There is a time and a place for flux core wire, without a doubt. Solid core wire, really great when you're working in a shop environment and you're looking for just a nice clean weld. And it's really helpful when you're welding sheet metal. But both have their you know, pros and cons, both work. All right, we're back in R&D. We're just gonna clean both these up with the wire wheel so you guys can see side by side once they're cleaned up. They don't look quite as different. And then we're gonna grind down that battery tray. You can see the end result. It's actually gonna be very similar.
All right, we got this all ground down. Looks pretty good. It's really hard to tell the difference between MIG and Flux once you clean everything up. Like you saw with the coupons, yeah, the Flux core was really dirty right after we were done welding. Once we clean it up with the wire brush though, you can see the weld really wasn't that much different than a MIG weld. It's got a little more spatter here and there, but it burned hot, got the job done. And then once you grind it down and finish it, really looks good. And again, that Flux core, that's gonna be better outside, when, especially when it's windy. It's also gonna be really good when you need to take something to a job site. It's portable, because you're not carrying a bottle. It is cheaper too to get into, because you don't need to buy that bottle. Now this MIG-90, it does come with the regulator and gas hose and everything you need to go right to MIG, but you can run flux core as an option. So we got this tray all wrapped up, battery fits in it. So the next step's gonna be figuring out how we build a top. Once we get it in the car, we'll go from there. For more information about any of these products, visit eastwood.com.